Christ the victim undefiled, God and sinners reconciled. When in fierce and bloody strife, met to gather death and life, Alleluia, Alleluia. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, James died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. On the day of his baptism, James put on Christ on the day of his religious profession, he was clothed with the grace to live the evangelical counsels. At the end of time, may Christ clothe him in glory and enfold him in his love. On the day of his baptism, James received the mark of Christ's cross. At his profession of perpetual vows, he received the image of Christ crucified and was invited to follow in his footsteps. May he come to share in the glory of his resurrection. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of James, your servant and priest, 
whom you honored with sacred office while he lived in this world, may exalt forever in the glorious home of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before others, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation they shall shine, and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Who live God? 
God's love. God will always be near and will show them mercy. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. And then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to express our condolences to Jim's brother, Bob, and to the other family members who were not able to be with us today, and to all of you who are his friends 
some for many years standing. We have lost a significant person in our lives. There is no saint who doesn't have a past. There is no sinner who doesn't have a future. This simple aphorism applies to each and every one of us. In the scriptures, it is illustrated nowhere better than in the story of the man we call the good thief, Saint Dismas. We don't know what he did to deserve the sentence of death by crucifixion. <clears throat> Luke's gospel is our sole source of information about him. One translation tells us that he was a criminal, another that he was a robber, and yet another that he was a revolutionary. Perhaps he was guilty of treason. Perhaps he had blood on his hand. In any case, when he came to the pivotal moment in his life, when he had to make a decision that would determine the future, he seized the moment. He rebuked the other man crucified along with him and Jesus for mocking Jesus, and he uttered a simple word of repentance. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And for this, he heard words of forgiveness more explicit than any of us are ever likely to hear. I assure you, this day you will be with me in paradise. By all accounts, Jim Burchill was brilliant. As a writer, a critic, a teacher, and an administrator, he ruffled not a few feathers over the years. Many of his opponents may have sought from him an expression of repentance that they thought was not forthcoming. But beginning with a postscript to his Christmas letter to friends in 2006, Jim realized that his mental powers were fading. He wrote at that time, <clears throat> this year I've noticed a depletion of my mental abilities that are clearly recognizable as an onset of dementia. I scramble for old friends' names. I don't fail to recognize old friends, but reaching for their names becomes more difficult, and it seems to be true no matter how many years I've known them. They say that one forgets friends first and enemies last, but I have a complex deficit in that I can't remember enemies at all. It could be called an indefensible position. Truth to tell, I don't much recall negative things, except when fretting that there may be apologies or long delayed. Over the next nine years, this decline became full-blown Alzheimer's disease, until by the time of his death, Jim could not utter or write a coherent sentence. Jim's sufferings was not brutal but short, as was that of the man next to Jesus on the cross. It was long and drawn out, and he knew that it was happening. I am inclined to think that this was Jim's penance for his sins, whatever they may have been, and that he accepted it as such. We lay Jim to rest today as a friend and brother who was not unlike each one of us, graced by God, but also sinners. There is no saint who doesn't have a past. There is no sinner who doesn't have a future. Thank mm -hmm. you.
God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from death. With confidence, we pray in his name. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for all bishops and pastors of the church, may they always shepherd the flock of Christ with compassion and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our For Christians around the world who suffer for the sake of the gospel, especially at the hands of terrorists, and for those who have been killed for their steadfast faith in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For our recently baptized sisters and brothers, may they persevere in living the, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in their daily lives. Let us pray to the Lord. For this University of Our Lady, may it continue to foster faith and reason in light of the teachings of Christ and his church. Let us pray to the Lord. For the religious and staff of Holy Cross House, who cared for the spiritual and medical needs of Father Birchall for some six years, in appreciation for their dedication and service. Let us pray to the Lord. For the family and many friends of Father Birchall who mourn his passing, may they be comforted and strengthened by the Paschal mystery we celebrate during this Easter season. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our And for our brother James, a religious priest of Holy Cross for 55 years, may he come to share in the banquet feast of heaven together with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord, company with the Holy Mother of God and all the saints without ceasing, let us pray to the Lord. Hear our God, our shelter and our strength, hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother James. Cleanse him of his sins and grant him the fullness of redemption. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Like a 
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, James, your servant and priest, may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully ministered here on earth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. James and St. Andre and blessed Basil, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who have you, whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant James, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection when from the earth he will raise up the flesh of those who have died and transform our lowly body after the patterns of his own glorious body. To all our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, for we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of that peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Rose triumphing, a 
Let us pray. Renewed by food from your heavenly table, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that by the power of this sacrifice, the soul of James, your servant and priest, who faithfully ministered in your church, may exult forever in your sight. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. With faith in Jesus Christ, let us take leave of our brother James. His religious life on this earth was a sign of the kingdom which is to come. May our farewell express our love for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day in that kingdom, we shall joyfully greet him again, when with the love of Christ, which conquers all things, will destroy death even itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother James in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon our brother in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness. May our fellowship with him in the saints of Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us now and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother James to his place of rest. In paradisum, De tu cante angeli, in tu adventu, suscipiante martiri. 